represent, represent facts. Let's that, talk about the, correct position. the data you have from the Kenya Revenue Authority, yeah. because they're the ones who collect the revenue in their yes. report. In the first quarter, ended September 2023, the oil taxes, the target was 84.6 billion shillings. They collected 77.7 billion shillings. Similar period last year, it was 78.5 billion shillings. That's a drop of about 800 million shillings. So indeed, for quarter one, there has been a reduction. If you are to speak about the volumes, the same quarter, diesel in 2022, quarter one, it was 1.15 metric tons, 1.5 million metric tons. This time round, the same quarter, it is 1.05 metric tons, a reduction of 56,000 metric tons. For petrol, 770,000 for quarter one, 2022. Quarter one, this year, it is 742,000, a reduction of 28,000 metric tons. So there has been a reduction. The difference comes in because the taxes are higher, more expensive than it was last that year. That is not the correct position, my friend. Those let are me, figures from KRA. Let me explain to you. Okay. We import fuel for Kenya, but 40% of that fuel goes to Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda, and sometimes all the way to DRC. With the Eastern DRC get fuel from, from, from Kenya, right? So, so when you look at the figures, you must know that there is a component of fuel that is not sold in Kenya, that is sold outside Kenya. That, that you must, that you must know. Really no. about the revenue, isn't it? That, that's what you must know first, yeah. right? So when you are looking at the quantities and the numbers, you need to factor that into, into, into the equation, right? And secondly, we are beginning to look at other alternatives. A lot more, a lot more people now we've connected to electricity. People who are using diesel. In fact, this year, most of our thermal energy uh, electricity generation has gone down. Why? Because we have moved the number of Kenyans on electricity from 2.3 in uh, 2013 to now 9.4. So we have more Kenyans who, have, who are not using diesel. We have more, Ken we have more uh, companies, we have more infrastructure that who are using diesel that now we are connected to electricity. That explains some of the reduction. If you look at... Uh, but, but this is a direct consequence from energy, the Finance Act of energy, 2023. That is not the, that's, not the correct, that's not the correct position. I am telling you... KRA is reporting, more and more, President. Exactly. So that, what I, why I'm telling you, the quantities that have gone down is because more people are not using diesel, especially in the big companies, if you look at what, what we are saying because we have made it possible for them to use electricity. We have reduced, in certain cases, electricity for industrial power, so that instead of them powering their mechanism using diesel, they are now using electricity that we are generating. And it is partly why we have connected more people to electricity. mafuta. <laughs> Uh, project ama tunaweza sema hii G2G deal ama mpango wa G2G deal. Um, azma yake ilikuwa ni kupunguza hata bei ya mafuta. Je, yeah, did we achieve the required re results? Wewe ndio umesema azma yake ni kupunguza bei. Azma yake ilikuwa ni kuhakikisha kwamba number 1 mm -hmm. we have fuel. Because when I came into office people were queuing in petrol stations for fuel. True? That was the case. Mm -hmm. Now Nobody is queuing in any petrol station. We have continuous supply. Number two, half the companies in Kenya, fuel companies, had closed down. Today, no company is operating outside the net. Every company has fuel. Number three, local companies were buying fuel in US dollars. Today, they are buying it in Kenya shillings. If you ask any Kenyan company that is selling fuel, our oil marketers across Kenya, they are very happy with the deal we structured. And number three, we have removed pressure on the US dollars. In fact, when I came into office, there are many companies who are considering relocating from Kenya. Why? Because if you can't have foreign currency to pay your dividends, 
for companies that are not Kenyan. There, there was a backlog of almost eight months of companies that had not paid dividends for their investors because there was no dollars in the market. Today, I have made sure that though the dollar is high, but it is available. Mwishimu Arais, katika siku kuyo ya muhuru ulisema kwamba uchumi wa taifu umeamalika. Kabisa. Siku chache kabla ya hotuba yako. Naibu Rais Regari Gashagu alikuwa amesema huende kachukua muda hata takriban miaka kumi hivi katika kushughulikia masuala muhimu ya wananchi. Wakati fulani Waziri wa Fedha Henry Rotich akasema kwamba hapana. Njuguna. Waziri wa Fedha eh, Njuguna Ndungu akasema kwamba hali ni ngumu kwa taifa hasa kulipa eh, mishahara na masuala mengine ambayo yanohusiana na fedha. Hali ya uchumi kwa vipi mheshimiwa rais na, na hii Tukisalia hapo, tukisalia hapo uh, Prime Sears Musalemu Dawadi amesema three years you know to quote him verbatim, team he's forecasting a difficult two to three years asking Kenyans to bear the burden so just like um, Kitu here is asking do we during your manifesto launch Mr President you called it the plan is there a plan there is for economic plan? recovery because you are saying this your deputy is saying another thing um, treasury cs a different thing mm -hmm. prime cabinet secretary i mean this should be one government that Nani is in one voice. Hapa uh -huh. Nani and, and, and kenyans kweli. themselves wa Kenya wa president wanaumia wa Kenya wanasikiza pia huyu anasema hivi huyu anasema tuliza boli <laughs> tumelituliza nani nasema hivi kweli nisikizeni nimesema hivi nataka kuwajibu ninyi wote watatu mm -hmm. mimi nimesema if you read my statement i said our economy today is out of debt distress and that is the truth. For your information, if I didn't step in, let me even say, if I wasn't president, the kind of decisions I have made, very difficult decisions, you know, very painful decisions. Decisions that I know they will cause pain, but it is better we make those decisions now than get Kenya into that distress. There are almost eight countries in our continent, including one that went into debt distress. I don't want to mention countries, you know them, last almost three weeks or, or one month. That is the worst thing that can happen to any country, to go into debt distress. We, have, we are now out of debt distress. Our economy is stable, but the difficult part is still there. We still have to navigate. All we have done is to avoid the cliff, right? That we have avoided because we have negotiated, uh, we have put bricks on expenditure. Mm -hmm. We have uh, negotiated uh, a good package with the World Bank, with IMF, with development partners, with bilateral uh, countries, China, Europe, and everywhere. And that's why I have been on the road uh, so many times. People ask, what is he doing? It was necessary for me to step in and stabilize so that Kenya does not go into debt distress. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let me tell you what Ndungu was saying. He, Ndungu was in parliament. That's actually where that's I was right. headed. He says the Ndungu government Ndungu is was, broke. Ndungu was in parliament. Mm. And he was being pushed. Oh, you need, you need to do this more. Ndungu was telling them, look, we don't have the kind of money you're talking about. We don't have money to increase this and to increase this and to increase this. That, that, that is the correct position. Um, we have, and that is why we are cutting back on many aspects, because this is what is required at um, this point in time. It is the difficult decisions we have to make now so that tomorrow looks better. Mwishimuwa Raisu, ufafanuzi wako wa uchumi kumi marika ni nini wakati ambapo wa kena wengu wa mamikia garame ya mamisha. And you see, and you see, what Musalia is saying mm. is for us to be able to get to a place where we can say, we are good, you know, that things are moving, there is money in the pocket, we can feed ourselves, we can do everything. It takes time, mm -hmm. right? How long? And it takes time. Because <laughs> How long, you, Mr. How long? President? You want me to say three months, five months, one year. No, you're quoting relax. your prime oh, secretary relax. who says relax. two to three years. Relax, yeah. because About we are not in charge of all the factors that will finally determine where we are going, let us give ourselves time. No. But I want to promise the people of Kenya that we will sort this situation out. Mwishimu Arez, unaposema uh, utumi umemarika. Ufafanuzi wako utumi kumemarika ni nini? Hasa wakati ambapo wakenya wanalamikia karame ya maisha. Number one, 
Na ni vizuri umeuliza gharama ya maisha. Gharama ya maisha inachangiwa na vitu vitatu. Ya kwanza ni gharama ya chakula. Right? Na nikisema uchumi, uchumi iko na uchumi ya tumbo. Nataka nikuulize. Na wakenya wenzangu. Tumefanya lolote kupunguza gharama ya chakula? Yes. We have done major steps. The price of food items is today lower than it was a year ago. It is a fact. Lakini, of course, it's not convenient for certain people to accept. That's number one. Number two, globally, where is Kenya? Uchumi wa numbers, and these are not my figures. We've brought down inflation from nine point something to now 6.8. Those are figures, global figures of the World Bank. Number two, our economy is growing at 5.4%. Not my figures, World Bank figures, right? In fact, they, they quote Kenya is the 29th fastest growing economy globally. Those are figures out there. Of course, many people don't want to accept. I know that there is still no money in people's pockets. Uchumi wa mfuko bado ndio bado. Yeah? Are we doing are we doing something about it? Yes. That is why we are spending more money in education. Yeah? We are putting money more money in education. In fact, this year we are putting an extra 120 billion in education to do what? To make sure that we reduce outlay by uh, uh, Kenyans to fund education. Number two, we are putting more money in health. That is why we pass four laws. What do we want to do? We want to make sure every ordinary citizen has a health insurance. Those who are paying 500 will come down to 300. We are going to make sure that we don't leave nobody behind. That is why I am going out of my way to create jobs. Today, as I talk to you, because you need to put money in people's pockets. Today, as I talk to you, 120,000 people are, housing, uh, are working in our housing program. Today, as I talk to you, we are working on export of labor, making sure that we connect Kenyans to jobs abroad. Today, as I talk to you, we are expanding the space of digital jobs. We just passed the law so that we can create ICT hubs across Kenya. I have already negotiated for digital jobs globally. Kenyans are very good at it. We are going to spread opportunities so that people can put money in their pockets. So, so that's why I'm saying we, ha we need a plan. You know, it is easy to say, uh, let us do quick fixes. We have been doing quick fixes for a long time, and we haven't gotten it right. Many people wanted me to do a Mr. quick President, fix the challenge by, is by subsidizing UNGA. I told them, let us not subsidize UNGA. Let us, let us promote uh, production. Mm -hmm. We will eventually get the right results better. Mwishimu wa Raisa, awali kulikuwa na mazingira uh, mazuri pengine ya kufanyia biashara. Tunavoona sasa, sijui kama palikoseka wapi pengine waneza kutueleza, manake kulikuwa na mazingira mazuri ya kufanyia biashara. Uh, kuna takuwa mbazo zimetolewa wata na FKE na dhani wakisema kwa kuna makampuni ama kuna wa Kenya takriban elfu sabina ambo, ambo wameachishwa kazi. Kwa katika serikali yako mshimiwa, palikoseka nini haswa pale mpaka mazingira kufanya kazi ya kawa magumu kiasi cha kwamba asilimia 38 na ane ya wakenya wanasema kwamba maisha ni magumu. Na hizi ni takuima mbazo ziko zaidi ya hamsini kwa mara ya kwanza katika mkenya kusema kwamba maisha ni magumu na pesa hayonikani. Na tukisalia hapo Mr. President, because it's just based on what she said. Are you aware that 87% of Kenyans, your people, Mr. President, that is nine out of 10, have opted to reduce on personal expenditure because of the current economy. Watu wana opt kutokula, which is what we're talking about, uchumi atumbo. They are foregoing food because of the current um, situation. Good. I want you to read a clip or even a text. It was in the standard. Ten months after Kibaki became president, the same number of Kenyans said NAC and President Kibaki had made their life worse than ever. 
because Kibaki decided to make the right decisions, not popular decisions, right? 10 months after he was president. We are in the same space. But let me tell you the following, that um, it is true. We are facing a difficult situation. We are facing a difficult situation because that is the global situation. But are we doing something about it? Yes, we are doing something about it. Is it bearing results? Yes, it's bearing results. The price of food is coming down because of our intervention, by God's grace. The global economy is appreciating what Kenya is doing. Let me go to FKE. FKE said 70,000 Kenyans have, have, have lost jobs or have, have gotten out of jobs. Part of those 70,000 Kenyans, for your information, are teachers who are working in private schools who we have hired as government. Now they are teaching in, uh, we have hired 56,000 teachers into, into, uh, as teachers. We have hired an additional 120,000 people working in our housing program. We have a plan to make sure that we keep increasing. We have only 31, 31 sites of uh, our housing uh, program. We have another 34 that will be rolled out uh, uh, the first quarter of next year. By the end of next year, we will have between 200 and 250,000 Kenyans working. So the economy is adjusting towards where we want to go. We do not want to be an export destination for others. We also want to produce what, what we should be producing. Quavo. And that is why we are, we, are, we are working on the difficult patch for now so that we can stabilize the future. Kwevo mwishimwa rais unakubali kwamba wa, wa Kenya alifusabini kweli walifutwa kazi ama walikosa kazi. Sikubali, wawo ndi wamesema. Mimi nime kuambia. Na wakaandikuwa na serikali. Kumanisha ni makampuni ya liyo humu pengine ya lifunga wakatoka ndo wakaja wakaandikuwa na serikali ama hawa walikuwa ni wakutuka. Wacha sasa ni kuambie, wale wamesema, wale wa, yale wamesema. Mm -hmm. What I have told you is what I can vouch. Mm -hmm. Have I hired 56,000 teachers? Yes. Are there 120,000 people working in our housing program? Yes. Mm. So as to uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, on FKE side, you need to verify the figures. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President uh, Sam, just uh, one second. You have talked about pain and that Kenyans need to, you know, appreciate the pain and the process like uh, uh, President Kibaki did. Um, and State House and where you sit, you set the tone uh, for for whatever government agencies and officers below you do. That's correct. And you are asking Kenyans to be patient. You're asking Kenyans to tighten their belt. But if you look at your administration and state house to, to be specific and other officials, look at foreign travel has been up 26% just this um, ending quarter to 1.1 billion. And Kenyans, are feeling quite taxed. And the hustlers that you represent are looking around the numbers that we are discussing today, and they're wondering, um, where have we missed this? Because on one end, you're asking Kenyans to be, you know, to, 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 to bear with government, to tighten their belts. The Treasury is saying things are bad. You're saying you're preventing us from, you know, going off the cliff. But on the other end, the extravagance in government um, is really still, still heavy. How do you reconcile this to the situation? I will answer you this way. Go and look at the budget. We have cut by 50% the budget for travel and entertainment. 50%, right? In the supplementary budget, just go and check the figures. That is about 11 billion shillings that we have reduced. Have I traveled more than the, the former presidents? Yes. And I have traveled not as a tourist. I have traveled to sort out the matters of Kenya. If I didn't package the, what I have packaged to salvage our country from going over the cliff, we'd be talking a different story. Would you rather 
I sit in Nairobi and see Kenya go down? Or would you rather I go to America and America has really supported us in making sure that we structure uh, a, a deal with uh, uh, World Bank and IMF? Would I travel to China to make sure that we structure the bilateral deal that will see all our roads come back? Would, I, would you rather I don't travel or I travel to South Korea to sort out the problem you see in our, in our, in our, in our electricity space, that we now have money to do what the investment we have not done in the last 10 years in our, in our energy transmission. The reason why you find uh, the blackouts, you know, and is the challenge we have with our, 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 our transmission infrastructure. And, and I have found resources to, to now sort, sort that out. So would you rather I sit here or I look for the bilateral agreements that will give Kenyans an opportunity to work abroad and to work at home on uh